I'm glad to be with you here today on this little video blog. Great to be together. And I'm so happy and honored to be here with really one of my primary mentors and spiritual fathers in faith, Pastor Tommy Reed. We are in his home here tonight. Pastor, great to be together. Well, it's always great to be with you. And we've had a great weekend together at the Tabernacle. Oh, we had a, fun, a phenomenal time. You preached Sunday morning, and uh, David Thomas from Youngstown, Ohio, and what a phenomenal job. Both both you did, but uh, what a phenomenal job he did on the, on the night of the leadership rally. He spoke on how do we live in a culture of honor. And... That's so important because today everything is dishonored. We dishonor life, we abort babies, we dishonor elderly, we think we want to kill them now if they get incapacitated, we, we dishonor the law, we dishonor mm. p our political leaders, uh, even if we disagree with them, uh, we, we have no right to dishonor them. Right. Yeah, one of the things that fascinated me about David, and I'm sure it's why he's friends with you yeah. because it's similar to you, Pastor, is that... I mean, David is a full Holy Spirit renewal revival guy. I mean, yeah. they're, they're, their church has a Friday night river service. Yeah, right. They are fully embracing of the Holy Spirit's move, and yet such a focus on leadership, yeah. you know, such a focus on impacting culture, yeah. such a focus on taking the experience of the Holy Spirit yeah. and bringing it out of the church in a way that is incarnational to society. Yeah, and it's rather interesting, ever since they got into what we call the river, you know, you know, right. the, the renewal movement, their church has exploded in growth. Now, they're in this tiny town. They're, well, I think, 2,000 people or something. And he has seen that church grow from 46, 46 members. 46 people until they have an attendance of 4,500 on Sunday. Incredible. And 2,000 people in the town, or 1,600 people in the town, it's amazing. It's obviously the biggest facility in the town. Right. Pastor, you've seen revivals come and go. You've seen uh, flows of the Spirit come and go. You've been 49 years at the Tabernacle. Yeah. And I had the privilege uh, 24 years ago to come the first time and minister. And, and the East Coast Conference, Eagles Wings Ministries, really, in a sense, was birthed because when I reached out to you, I had moved back from Jerusalem. Yeah. And I said, Pastor, the Lord has spoken to me about our ministry. I know where to launch it with this first conference. You opened the doors of the tabernacle to me. That was a great conference. We've never been the same. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you know, when you talk about revival, first of all, I grew up in revival. Uh, I'm 79 years of age. And so I was present in early Pentecostalism with the leaders, the ones who were saved at the turn of the century, received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They were my mentors. Right. And then I, one woman that was so impacting me was Hattie Hammond. Right. Uh, impacted many of our leadership today. And then we were present during the Latter Rain Revival of the mm -hmm. 1940s. My folks were attended a church where the Latter Rain outpouring came. And uh, then the healing revivals. We were a member of the Voice of Healing with all of those great healing evangelists. I saw that move. And then, of course, I had the wonderful privilege of pastoring in Manila following Lester Summerall after that phenomenal move of God that touched the whole nation. Mm -hmm. And then being with Dr. Cho when that revival started there. So I've kind of lived this revival <laughs> thing all my life. You absolutely have. Yeah. And what do you see today? What well, do you see today with the move of the Holy Spirit and culture? Culture's different than it was as you grew up. Well, and, you know, it's different, but the move of the Holy Spirit, revival, it just flows along with culture. Mm -hmm. Early Pentecostals, for instance, uh, began in the day of the gay 90s and the roaring 20s. Mm -hmm. And the music... When the gay 90s meant something different than it does Right, today. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know. And they're dancing the Charleston. Right. And Pentecostals uh, adopted new forms of music, mm -hmm. revival forms of music. And they rolled back, they rolled out the pipe organ and pump organ, rolled in the honky-tonk piano, and danced to the altar. Uh, they were very culturally relevant. That was inspired by the Holy Spirit. I remember something that you said to me years ago. There's been so many things over the years that you've said yeah. that just have made their way into my heart yeah. and, and, and just permanently been there. One of them was when you said to me, you said, Robert, the Holy Spirit, just like Jesus, yeah. is always incarnational. Incarn that's right. He's always going to come within a culture and manifest himself. What did you mean by that? Well, he what incarnates that his message. Just like I said, the, the form of music. If you're going to reach today's generation... You're going to have to speak today's language. The Holy Spirit, the day of Pentecost, spoke today's Isn't language. Isn't that compromise? 
<laughs> Absolutely not, because it's the language of the culture. Uh, the, the great revivalists have always been culturally relevant. They didn't mm -hmm. speak the culture of the last generation. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Billy Sunday was throwing chairs over the audience. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he was the, the guy coming out of the, out of the steel mill. Right. said, man, I identify with this. Yeah. Well, the Holy Spirit is living and active today in powerful ways. I mean, we see what's happening in Asia. Yeah. We see what's happening in Africa. We see what's happening in Latin America. And yet in America, in Europe, we've got this postmodern yeah. situation going on where um, how will the Holy Spirit incarnate himself within a postmodern culture? Well, it'll enable us to speak postmodern cultural vernacular, mm -hmm. not postmodern cultural theology. There we go. Postmodern cultural vernacular. So we become able to communicate to culture yeah. without um, sacrificing the deeply held beliefs and values well, that we have. you don't change the belief system at all. Right. You take the belief system and, in, and in culturalize it within the language and the communication forms of today. Mm -hmm. the, the Holy Spirit, God is always in the now. I loved Oral Roberts. You know, he used to say God is in the now. And I used to, as a kid, I thought, well, what does that mean? And yet, intuitively, you knew what it mean. It means that God has enculturated himself yeah. in, and speaks the language. Jesus didn't speak uh, a language foreign to the people in the land of Judea. He spoke their language. Mm -hmm. Another thing, Pastor, about your life that profoundly has shaped mine, has, has been fundamental, is this understanding that you have that every human being is created in the image of God Absolutely. and has a place of dignity, a place of worth. Certainly we're all sinners, mm -hmm. um, but there was something different about you than, than most Pentecostals. Um, it always felt like most, <laughs> most Pentecostals, most pastors, there was such an emphasis on, you know, uh, amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. Yeah. Um, and you said, well, maybe we're wretches, but we're wretches that are created in the image of God. And well, uh, John Calvin said it best, that every man still has a residual image of God within him. Which is really a very Jewish concept. Yeah. That there's a spark of, a spark of, of God, of, of God's will, and of God's being. That and is, inside of the worst sinner, is the design that God has made for them, if we, they can just discover it. And how does that impact you as a pastor? How does that, what does that belief do for you as you meet people? That everyone that I speak to has, first of all, dignity. They are made in the image of God. So when I see them, I have to see God. Mm -hmm. Number two, they all have a purpose. And my job as a pastor is to help them discover purpose. Why are they here? What are they here for? Mm -hmm. What are they designed to do? And then to, and discover that that design, that purpose, is not just a God's sake vacuum. It is God within them. Yes, they need God to make it come forth to its fullest. Uh, Henry Ford was designed to put America on wheels. <laughs> Edison was designed to light up America. Right. You know, uh, Carnegie was designed to give us the steel mm -hmm. uh, to produce the, the new generation. Uh, now, that doesn't mean they're Christians, but sure. there's a God design within us mm -hmm. if we can just discover it. Well, 24 years ago, you helped me discover mm -hmm. my purpose, and I've never yeah. been the same, and I thank you. Well, of course, if I ever have a purpose in life, if you go to Who's Who and read my biography, you will see it says there, my, my very purpose, the core of my being, is to help these people discover that they, are, they have great dignity, that they're the only person in the world with their set of fingerprints. Number two, discover that they have purpose and design and destiny that's already put inside of them by God. Thank you doing, for doing that for yeah, me and you. for my life. God bless you. We love you lots. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, I pray that you have a great, blessed day. Visit us on Facebook. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. God bless you.